Hi, my name is Sam Falcone. I am a biology student at Westfield State University, and today I'm going to be presenting my research on the functional morphology of the feeding apparatus in chain pickerel, Esox niger, adaptations of manipulation and consumption of large live prey. So after an animal captures its food, it has to process it and get it into a form that is easier to consume. So prey processing is important because organism ne organisms need to obtain as much energy as possible from their food while expending as little, little energy as possible in the process. So organisms like the lion, the sea lion, the elephant, and the bird that we see on the screen all have forelimbs or appendages that help them hold onto their food while they shear or bite off chunks of food from it. Other organisms like the pelican have different adaptations that make it easy for them to hold on to their large prey so they can get it into a better position to swallow it. And then sharks are able to eat large pieces of prey by biting off large chunks of it a little bit at a time. So that brings us to the question of how do you eat large things when you don't have forelimbs to hold on to it? So that brings us to the snake and the moray eel. So on the left, we have the snake, which has a highly flexible upper and lower jaw, and their lower jaw specifically, um, is, each half is able to move independently of one another. And as you can see in the picture, it is walking each half of, the, of its jaws along its prey and gradually dragging it down its throat, which is called the pterygoid walk. And then on the right, we have the moray eel, and they have a set of pharyngeal jaws, which many aquatic organisms have. However, theirs are mobile. And so as you can see in the video, when the moray eel is holding a piece of prey in its oral jaws, the pharyngeal jaws are able to protract um, into their oral cavity, grab onto that piece of prey, and then retract, dragging the prey down its throat. So these are just a couple of mechanisms that um, animals have developed to deal with eating large prey like this. So that brings us to the chain pickerel. So the chain pickerel eats large prey that is that is still alive um, after they capture it. And as you can see in the video, it shakes its head and gradually works its way down the prey until it gets to the head of the prey, at which point it will swallow it head first down its throat. So it's very interesting mechanism because it's appears to be holding on to and letting go of its prey at the same time. So we really set out to determine how this apparatus is working and how it is accomplishing this task. So in order to explore this, we used methods of dissection and manual manipulation. So we dissected four pikes who measured about 34.2 centimeters in length, and we also dissected four bass as a comparison who also measured about 34.2 centimeters in length. So we used bass as a comparison to the pickerel um, because it eats many of the same things that the pickerel does and lives in a very similar environment. And also bass are very efficient suction feeders and pickerel aren't. So we thought it would be a very interesting comparison to examine. So as you can see here, the mouth of the pickerel and the mouth of the bass look very different. So in the bass, um, they have a very large premaxilla um, and all of their tooth, teeth um, are concentrated on that premaxilla. Um, they also have a set of pharyngeal jaws um, that they um, can use to swallow their prey. So after they you know, are able to suction feed and use suction to draw that prey into their mouth, they'll use their pharyngeal jaws to swallow it. So going over to the pike, we can see that they have a smaller premaxilla and their teeth are really concentrated on their platypterygoids and the vomer as well. So very different anatomies. So going into the pharyngeal jaws of the pike specifically. So their pharyngeal jaws are not mobile like we see in the moray eel, um, but they do have um, a large um, number of teeth on both the upper and lower jaw. Um, and this is most likely used for swallowing prey um, after they get it um, in the optimal position for consumption. So next we looked at the hyoid and the dentary. So the dentary features, um, as well as the hyoid feature, um, you know, a large amount of teeth. Um, we also, in this video, are pulling on the urohyoid to see how much that, how much movement that causes in the lower jaw and also to look at um, the movement it's causing in the serratal hyal. And we did find that the serratal hyal was very flexible. Next, we look at, looked at the platypterygoids. 
And we found that the platyterygoids are mostly passive, so there's no direct muscle connection to them that is moving them. And really, the maxilla is um, what is primarily causing their rotation. And when that rotation does occur, you can see in this video that the teeth change, um, tr change position dramatically. And so next we looked at the premaxilla and maxilla of the bass and of the pike. So in the bass, you can see when we pull on that maxilla, there isn't, um, it's not causing a ton of movement in the premaxilla um, and the teeth really aren't changing position. Whereas if you look at the pike, you can see that the maxilla is extremely flexible and it's really causing um, a, the, the teeth on the platyterygoids to change position um, pretty drastically. Um, and so next we looked at the teeth pads on the upper and lower jaw of the pike. And so you can see um, on the upper jaw, the teeth are, like I've said before, um, concentrated on the uh, platyterygoids and the vomer and on the teeth on the platyterygoids sp specifically are pointed um, inward. And then if you look at the teeth on the lower jaw, um, if you look more posteriorly, the teeth are smaller, or more anteriorly, excuse me, the teeth are smaller. And then as you move to the more posterior, uh, more posteriorly, you'll see that the teeth get larger and they're also in pairs. And we found that the more um, posterior tooth in the pair tends to be more flexible in its joint, whereas the more anterior tooth in the pair is much more stiff in its joint, which is what we're demonstrating in this video. And so now putting that all together and thinking about how the pike is accomplishing this task of prey processing, we can see here again that they're shaking their head. And what we are have hypothesized is that the platyterygoids are really a key element in this um, apparatus and that the maxilla is um, contributing a large part to the movement of the platyterygoids. And we also think that the teeth on the dentary play a large role as well. So breaking this down a little bit more, um, we can see here um, that if we were to take a cross section of the left um, platyterygoid specifically, we can see that in its starting position, the tooth is pointed to the right and, um, is, yeah, it's pointed to the right and pointed inward. And then as you rotate the um, platyterygoid, on its axis, it's gonna cause the tooth to change position and become more erect. And so now if we look at um, the right platyterygoid, if the, if the pickerel is choosing this black point um, as its pivot point, so it's using that tooth on its lower jaw as its pivot point, this is going to cause the right platyterygoid to move on this arc. And so when that happens, the tooth is going to just slide out of the prey um, without any real rotation happening in the uh, platyterygoid. And so next, if we look um, over at the left platyterygoid again, we can see that you know, we would expect it to become more embedded in the prey based the based off of what is occurring in the le the right platyterygoid. However, we're seeing that rotation of the left platyterygoid, and that you know it it starts embedded with the tooth embedded in the prey, and as it rotates, it's going to cause the position of the tooth to gradually change until it is completely removed from um, its prey item. And this rotation of the platyterygoids is um, mostly caused by the premaxilla being pushed up by the prey. And so once it's uh, left and the teeth on the left and the right platyterygoid are completely disengaged from the prey, the pike has the ability to uh, rotate its head very rapidly around so that it is closer to the head of its prey. And so this will, it will perform this specific behavior, um, you know, gradually a number of times until it finally reaches the head of its prey and can swallow it head first down its throat. So this hypothesis um, does need to be studied further um, through the observation of live fish and live feeding events. 
And further research should also be conducted on the role that the muscles of the trunk play in the processing mechanism. Since it is a largely passive mechanism, um, they, they could potentially play a very large role. So I would like to acknowledge Westfield State University um, and the biology department, and I'd like to also acknowledge the UMass Undergraduate Research Conference. And lastly, I would like to uh, acknowledge um, my professor, Dr. Ramsey, as well as my fellow lab members. Thank you for watching my presentation. I hope you enjoyed.